And so it was a battle against the enemy was on the horizon. An enemy that Vladimir needed to defeat. There was, however, only archers in his army. Luckily for Vladimir, archers are extremely powerful. Vladimir would move forward bravely. Someone would have to, to ensure that his men were not stormed. But all oh, the cavalrymen were doing their thing, even dodging Vladimir. Those cheeky buggers. But it seems the enemy team also had a lot of archers. Someone needed to have the front line. It seemed that these enemies did not have the stomach. As they were running away. Oh. Even the poor camels were getting blasted. Seemed the enemies regretted their choice of engaging with Vladimir's army. And there it was. They all ended up fleeing like little babies. Jakus of the Jawal had now been imprisoned. Yo, yo, everybody. Vladimir is back. And he needs to repair his situation. He cannot defend Viron Castle with 28 men and nobody in the army. But if the other army is not that big, and by that, of course, it is meant the Britannian one, then he has the influence to gather one. Vladimir decided to do something that had not been done. He, a simple farm boy turned soldier, was now going to lead an army. Calling people of Batania in. If they could not defend Viron Castle, perhaps they could help urge on take Loch Ten Castle. Join in the continuing siege. It was time to ensure that they did not lose any castle. Of course, this was a guaranteed victory. Uh, John was very pleased indeed. But now, Veron Castle needed to be returned. And returned it would be! For both the armies had the same idea. Equally as poorly defended, this siege would be no problem. Except that the army returned. And it seemed that Urgeon did not care. He wished to fall. Which was very strange, Vladimir thought. This could not be the move. Indeed, this was not the move at all. Vladimir knew this. It was the strangest of choices. Vladimir had other plans. Plans that might work. Many enemies were randomly around Lagata. Perhaps they could all be baited into fighting him. It seemed they could not. They were all a bit too smart to gather up and fight. But then, some of them fought some peasants. And that was unacceptable. And so it was a massive battle that Vladimir himself was ordering about. Truly, he had come far. And so the men had come into position now. Almost. Nearly there, ever forward, to ensure that all the bolts and arrows would hit. Horsemen would get into position as well for a good flank. And forward! Infantry were put not too far behind the archers in case of a cavalry charge. And it began. The archer fire was working, just as it should. It would only be a matter of time until the... Filthy Imperial forces knew they had to charge or flee. And so it was. Finally, they understood they needed to change their tactics. And so the cavalry was sent into charge. Now that their large clump had been lessened into something more akin to a thin line, the cavalry would ride in exactly as Vladimir wanted. Although mostly into the cavalry line of the enemy. Attack! 
Time for the footman to get in on the action. Ha ha! Pathetic cavalry charge! And now it was Vladimir against the world! Crushing through this line! Getting in there, flanking them on his own, like a beast. Until his men came. Perfect strategy, madness, bloodthirst, but also tactics. Something the Vatanians were not previously known for. Everything else they were, though, naturally bloodthirst. But tactics. That was something unknown to the Batanians in this army. A welcome change of pace. Everyone was set to charge, even the archers. The enemy's forces could not match the power of those of Vladimir. And so it was a great victory. Sargoth was under siege. Now that was not something that Vladimir could tolerate. Hopefully, Marius's army understood that indeed they needed to stop this pest. No, they went for Veron Castle instead. Perhaps that would distract them from Sargot. Perhaps that was the smarter move. But Vladimir needed to know how many men were striking. Could he change it? Could he add more troops to his army? No, he could not. He had no influence. Sargot was lost? Madness. How could it be? They lost Sargot. His victories were short-lived as the Empire struck back. He needed to crush the enemies and he needed to do it fast. And it seemed that immediately rebels were not satisfied with the situation and rose up. But they were Vlandian rebels. That was no good at all. No good at all. Lock Hen was under siege once more? Horrible. Well, Veron Castle would fall faster. Unless three were fighting over here. Could Vladimir chase them down? He could. They would not get away with what they had done. As such, it was a fine grassland with little roses about, look like. Pretty. Perhaps the enemies were braver this time. Would they dare move towards Vladimir's army? Seems so. On a hill. They rose to challenge them. Something they would soon live to regret. Or perhaps die to regret. Arrow fire rained like acid rain on these enemies. They could not stand for the power of Britannia's finest archers. When would they dare to move in to strike like real soldiers? They were just allowing Vladimir to pelt them down. And so it was. That they came towards them, finally. Vladimir stood his ground, a beacon of death and destruction for his friends and soldiers. Until he took one too many arrows and decided that perhaps he didn't want the army to devolve into typical Batanian tactics. No. Now, with soldiers by his side, it was time! They would all be defeated for Batania. Wham! Bam! Boomerang! Shazam! Clap Blam! Vladimir's bloodthirsty berserking would lead him right everywhere into the enemy lines with his soldiers by their sides, with them always. None escape! Except it seemed one was already, and another. Vladimir had taken many arrows to his body. 
but he did not care. These were bo these were attacks meant to hurt his men, his fellow soldiers, and he knew he could take it. Rejuvenate on the strikes of his enemies, he knew. He would carry that burden for his men, for they could not. The arrows would have killed them, but even as two of the arrows seemed to have almost pierced his heart, Vladimir was unscathed. The day was won and enemies had been defeated, but it seemed that perhaps Valeus the Butcher, a wanderer even at the enemy's side, could perhaps be persuaded to work for Vladimir. And so it was, one enemy gone from the enemy's ranks. Whilst Vladimir did not fully trust the man, he knew he needed all the help he could get against the Empire. Strategy needed to be used, and tactics as well. Vladimir was a calculating man. He knew they needed to do something. And now there was even a second army around. Truly, things were looking grim. This meant that there was no way he could take Veron Castle at the moment. He knew that they would come for him. What he needed was more men. And he needed them now. With Sargoth no longer under their control and no way to control them, he needed to think fast. Thraktore Castle was further away than some of the others. Perhaps they ha would have a better shot at taking this one. Imperials were gathering up to stop the siege. Something that Vladimir had hoped. The Imperials would strike! This was good. This was good. Even if the enemy had many cavalry, Vladimir was now going to finally see if they could defeat large Imperial armies. Could they defeat all the cavalry? If this was a victory, he would have enough influence to keep the army going. What a battlefield. What a cliff. This cliff would cause many to think that there was no escape. But Vladimir knew different. Or in fact, he knew that that was exactly how it worked. But it wasn't no escape. For them. No. It was no escape for their enemies. Everyone! If the cavalry wished to charge into them, they would have nowhere to go. This was an opportunity that Vladimir had never seen before, and it seemed too good to not make use of. The famed cataphracts of the Imperials would be not be able to maneuver around and about after charging through their lines. Oh no. They would have nowhere to go but into the infantry line and off into the ocean if they dared continue to ride. The enemy was rushing forward. There was nothing to do but to send the cavalry in. And as they were moving closer and closer, Vladimir realized that he probably needed to have the infantry run forward. The enemy cavalry was not going anywhere, but at least they would not be able to flank. The enemies were here! And it was time to strike! Archers were pulling back, but the infantry were not! It's time to help out the men! Time to press backwards! Back again, men! They were trying to bait the battalions, and Vladimir would not have it! The Imperials' charge had failed, and they knew it. And Vladimir knew it too. The first charge of the Imperials had failed miserably. And now they would pay the price. And so, as there was apparently no more leadership, the Imperials all charged forward. Now this was music to Vladimir's eyes! Chaos! Truly, the Imperials had lost their head, and it was now time for them to lose everything else. Many Imperial men were successfully defeating Batanians. 
It was a crazy brawl. But that is the way of war. Men would fall on both sides. Vladimir knew this. But it is what had to be done. Where did all these Imperials come from all of a sudden? They had run over to where the cavalry had been hidden. Waiting for a flank, yet they were themselves attacked. Apparently, it seemed an old of the Imperials were out of their leaders. Not that whoever remained had good tactics. The music, the tune of victory. There was nothing for it but to continue the siege. Or was there? No. This was not the siege to continue. Abkoma Castle was now under attack. It was time to go to Viron Castle, whilst they were distracted with other potential targets. Meanwhile, Vladimir used his influence to ensure that the army would remain. Make peace? That was not something that Vladimir could accept. They had lost everything no vladimir would not say anything hopefully he could take back a castle or two before the decision was made no siege engines no nothing just attacking he would do what he could but he did not have the influence to do anything about any votes but vladimir felt the tingle in his ball sack he knew he needed to be fast and there it was they had what it took. This castle would be theirs. And so it was. A nighttime siege with no siege engines. And a catapult on the enemy side. Maybe more catapults than one. It was a desperate attempt. Peace was on the horizon, Vladimir feared. He did not trust the other less intelligent lords of Britannia to do what was right. He knew that strategy was not their strong suit and as such... They might decide to sue for peace. But Vladimir was a lord now, and he knew that peace was not the answer. Luckily, Vladimir was as deadly at range as he was close up. Very. Wherever the siege engines from these Imperials were, they seemed to not be present at all. Where had they put them? Oh, there it was. Being loaded again. But the troops were getting up on the walls. This was the side that Vladimir needed to enter. Onto the walls, man! Stop the catapult! And so it was. Onto the walls. Onto the enemies. Into the fray. They were striking hard and fast, but could they do it fast enough to defeat Vladimir? Nobody was that good. These archers thought they could help defeat his army. They were wrong. The only reason they were not already dead was because of these two stupid soldiers blocking his attack path. He was tired of fighting at range. It's time to show these men all the power in his strikes. The front gate could be open. And that was a perfectly sensible thing to do. And so everybody was set to charge through the gates. Strike at the enemy's man! These gates will not stay closed! In men! Inwards! Take this castle back!
And there it was. No siege engines necessary. Vladimir's first siege. The sea first siege that he personally led was a victory. Veron Castle had been taken back. Could he take back Lochen? Abcomer? There was no way that Vladimir. So it was. There was now peace. Vladimir was right, for no longer was there war. Vladimir would walk around. He was happy that the castle had been taken back. The other lords were grumbling. Were they happy? Perhaps they felt the same happiness that Vladimir did. An uncertain one. Pleased that their efforts had gone so smoothly, but not pleased that their war was in the end a defeat. But Vladimir wished to speak with Kareen about something that he had wanted to tell her for some time. She would also not forget the glorious battle of Vera Castle. But was she ready to hear words of admiration? <laughs> Kareen was apparently not so excited about the opportunity that Vladimir was proposing. Proposal! But he would seek to spend some time with her, even if at first she didn't seem too excited. The words of Vladimir landed well, especially words of degradation. All things Vladimir knew too, all too well about. And the first thing indeed to do when you have taken power is to ensure you keep it. Kareen agreed with Vladimir's words. But did she agree with the man himself? Did she not find this visage handsome? Or perhaps she was just in a bad mood as she was discussing things with this other woman. The one in the background seemed to agree with that statement. Such is the way of life. But fear not. But Tanya will come out on top. And it will all be thanks to Vladimir's bloodthirsty calculations. Thanks for watching guys! And I'll see you next time!